Hey, it's Tom, and today I will try to explain you why I believe that GPT-3 is not going to replace software developers anytime soon. So, there is a lot of hype around GPT-3 recently. Twitter is full of videos and demos presenting that it can create designs, generate whole app in JSX, even change text to SQL queries. As a result of all that hype, even Sam Altman, OpenAI co-founder, wrote a tweet to cool it down. Seeing all those videos, a lot of people can think that software developer jobs are at risk right now. And I think they are not, and let me explain you why. Biggest problem of GPT-3 is that you have to describe logic using words. And people around the world are using different words to describe the same expected result. And if you are a software developer, you probably got used to that and you are able to understand that different words might have exactly the same meaning in terms of expected result. But GPT-3 won't know that you come from a different part of the world and you are just simply using different word to describe the same thing that a guy from a different part of the world using totally different word. And if you will have to play with the input using just small tweaks with re replacing one or two words to get a different re result, uh, it will take you a lot of time. And that's not a good so solution at all, in my opinion. And another problem is that even software developers are usually unable to describe the logic they, they just wrote uh, in uh, words uh, that are uh, simple enough to be uh, understood by, by different humans that are not software developers. And you will have to describe the logic in this way for GPT-3, so the model will understand that and generate some code, working or not, of course. GPT-3 has a limit of input words, so as for now, it's around 10 paragraphs of English text. So, let's imagine describing the whole system in 10 paragraphs. It's just impossible. Explaining or describing even a simple app in 10 paragraphs might be not enough. And every single time you will try to explain a separated part of the app, like generating each part uh, separately, each of the generated code will be not aware of the logic of the previously generated code. So, in general, you will be able to describe the big system, like splitting that into small chunks, like the small microservices, but each of them will be not aware of the logic used in the other one. And in general, how do you imagine creating a big, sophisticated system this way? It's just impossible. It, it won't work. Always remember that people are sharing only successful attempts. No one is sharing his failures, and there are probably a lot of them, because that's the nature of machine learning. So, if you have to run the same task multiple times, probably also playing with words to describe in a different way what's the expected result, and then you have to check each output, uh, the generated code, uh, you have to do a code review with the help of software engineer, then you don't save any time at all. GPT-3 is using few-shot learning. So, before you will be able to generate some output, uh, it's just worth to provide some reference for the model, so the model will know what domain of topic you're interested in. So, if you want to generate some React code, you have to provide some examples of React code, so the model will know uh, that you are interested in generating the React code. And for most of the examples, which are available on Twitter and in general in the internet, we don't know what was the reference. So, in, in a shortcut, we don't know how similar was the reference with the generated output. So, we just don't know if the output that was presented was not a close copy of the reference which was provided to the model. Another problem is model itself. It's so big that you cannot run it on your laptop or even a powerful PC. As for now, it's only available as a part of OpenAI API. And there are a lot of companies that cannot afford to generate code on external server without any knowledge who will be seeing the output result, how it's exactly working, because as for now it's a black box. And 
there are a lot of problems with licenses, privacy, and so on. Yes, it's a black box, but that's not the biggest problem. As for now, we don't know what will be the latency uh, while using that in production environment, uh, what will be the price per request maybe, per monthly access, uh, what about copyrights, mm, what about expected result. If uh, using the same input uh, today and um, next month we'll be able to expect the same result, that's very important for software engineering. That's it. I've spent a couple last days reading about GPT-3 to make sure that my software developer job is not at risk. And my conclusion is that GPT-3 is nowhere close to replace software de developers. But if your opinion is different, feel free to share that in the comments section. Okay, that's everything I prepared for you today. If you like this kind of videos, you can click like button and subscribe to my channel to see more this kind of videos. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching and see you next time, bye!